Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today we have with us Techiquatli Bayesa, and here, he's here to tell us about the Mexica New Year's, the Aztec New Year's that's coming up. And it's in March, right? Yeah, it's coming up uh, March 14th and 15th that weekend, and um, we'll be at Emma Push Park, like the uh, same place we were last year, uh, in the heart of the east side, um, mm -hmm. right at Story Road and King Road. Right and there. last year, mm -hmm. actually the last few years, it's been jam-packed, and you have a lot of exciting things going on there. Yes. What's the Aztec New Year's? How does that differ? Tell us all about that. <coughs> well, the Aztec New Year is, um, is our ancient way of tracking time, you know, before the Gregorian calendar came into effect and the Julian calendar. Uh, you know, our ancestors were great observers of nature. You know, and uh, through thousands of years of observing nature and the animals and the insects and the birds that fly, the movement of, uh, of the, the cosmos, you know, the stars, the different celestial bodies and everything, um, we're able to develop uh, the, the Ast what that they call the Aztec calendar these days. Uh, we call it the Tonal Mashiot. And, uh, you know, the, it's based on the Shupohuali, which is the solar year, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the Aztec calendar, the Tonal Mashiot, is um, basically 18 months mm -hmm. uh, with 20 days each month um, and an additional five and a quarter days. So it comes out to 365 and a quarter days. That's always been my understanding that it's the most accurate calendar in existence. Is that correct? Um, that's that's what everybody says, you know. Um, they compared it, probably close to it is like the Chinese uh, calendar, mm -hmm. uh, calendric system. But um, yeah, you know, our, our ancestors were were scientists, you know. Um, and a lot of all the different sciences that, that is known uh, to humankind, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, it, 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 I, I laugh a lot of times because the, the Eurocentric mindset in, the, in this country, they always claim that they invented this or they discovered that and, you know, physics and all the different mm -hmm. fields of science. But, you know, our ancestors knew about all of these things thousands of years ago, you know, back when, uh, when Europe was still thinking that if you sailed so far out into the ocean that you would fall off of the edge of the world. Our ancestors knew thousands of years before that that, no, the earth is round you know, and that we rotate this way around the sun and that the moon also rotates around the earth, you know. So, um, you know, we knew that thousands of years before the Europeans did. Um, we also had our we own mathematical system. We should have told them system. and then they would have could, Yeah, if, <laughs> if, they <laughs> if they would have asked, we would have told them, you know. So, uh, just like when they came here, if they would have asked for a little bit of land to, to grow, grow crops on and stuff, you know, we would have gave them a little bit of a space also, but they say they decided they Just wanted take to take it, it by force, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, it just, it just, I laugh every time I think about uh, those kind of things, but the calendar system is very, uh, is very, very accurate, and um, even modern day scientists have, have calculated it and everything, and, and say, wow, this is uh, uh, an incredibly accurate calendric system, you know, and, uh, and, you know, the planting of our crops was based on it. You know the whole agricultural system, uh, what to plant, when to plant it, when to cultivate it, you know, when to harvest, and and those type of things. You know, was based on that. Um, the different days of the year also have certain energies and certain power uh, to them that helps us to base our day-to-day -day activities and um, and even when we have. Uh, a study done, like each of us, like when you got your name, mm -hmm. I got my name and others, you know, there's, um, there's certain power, certain energies that come into play the day that we're born and every other day, you know, following like that. So <coughs> this year, uh, the Mexica Aztec New Year actually falls on March 12th, which this year will be that Thursday, um, and it'll begin at 12 noon. Now every that's year. the solstice? As well, or not? No, the solstice. The solstice is a few weeks later. Okay. Yeah, the actual alignment and everything. But 
Um, but the New Year's falls on the 12th. So yeah, the New Year's falls on March 12th uh, for us, and and it makes a lot more sense if you think about it. It's during the springtime, mm -hmm. right? Not the Gregorian calendar has uh, the New Year in the middle of winter, when everything is dormant, uh, nature right. is asleep, mm -hmm. the bears are sleeping, and and that kind of thing, you know. But in the springtime, life is is being reborn right. again. It's rejuvenating. The plants mm -hmm. and trees are flowering. The animals are being born. The bears are waking up, you know, and and uh, it's just a real vibrant time when life is is uh, you know surging forth once mm -hmm. again from nature. So uh, for us, it makes it makes a lot more sense. The Chinese New Year is very close to that. Uh, it's earlier, um, the Persian New Year also uh, uh, is very close to our time. Also, you know, so um, it's just kind of I guess our situation on the on the earth. You know, we're kind of towards the middle. Uh, of the of the earth like that so um, yeah this year we'll be celebrating uh, three read well we say yay akat uh, and on March 12th at uh, at 12 noon uh, begins the ends of the year of omitoshli which is two rabbit which the year we're in right now and we'll begin uh, the year of three read uh, the read being like the bamboo you know mm -hmm. that that type of read um, the numbers themselves mean, may have significance as well. Um, three, uh, for example, is um, uh, uh, sensitivity and equilibrium or balance. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's also uh, determination and willpower. You know, involved in that. You know, a fluidity. You know, like a, like the, the flowing of a of a creek or a river and that movement of water. You know, that that fluidity there. So. Um, and the akat, uh, the reed, the bamboo is, uh, you know, is a, uh, it grows very straight. You know, it's strong. You know, uh, we used to make our arrows from mm -hmm. the, the thinner ones, uh, spears from the, the little bit larger ones. And, um, you know, uh, it's also how we strive to be as human beings. You know, recto, straight, straight. you know, uh, honest, you know, with high integrity. Now, for uh, someone like who hasn't come <coughs> out to <coughs> celebrate the Mexica New Year's, what could they expect on Saturday? Um, they can expect a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we start the day Saturday with a sunrise ceremony, mm -hmm. um, so people should plan to be there at least by 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. Um, you know, we'll, we have a fire that we that will start up uh, there um, earlier, uh, and that fire will go throughout uh, the two days. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll pray, we'll, we'll greet the, the, the sun that day and begin the generating the spiritual energy of, uh, of that space there that we're going to be uh, praying in, you know, because our prayer, our dance is a prayer, you know, some people might look at it as entertainment or a show, but it's, it's nothing could be further from the truth, mm -hmm. you know, our dance is a prayer when our, all the dancers are are dancing and their feet are touching the ground like that. It's it's blessing that land. It's blessing the Mother Earth, you know, that way. And uh, and their their dancing sends energy and prayers to our altar or our, what we call momostli, mm -hmm. in the middle. And um, as we see and understand, a momostli is um, is a portal, mm -hmm. you know, to to the spirit world and 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 to our ancestors like that. And so when they're dancing, that energy goes to to that altar. And you feel it. And oh yeah, been I, there. You feel I, it. I feel it's it. Beautiful. And a lot of people have told me, even if they're not into the ways that much, mm -hmm. you know, they, because I like to find out. I like to see how people feel. Mm -hmm. And I talk to people that aren't involved with dance, aren't involved with a lot of things, and and they say, you know what? I really, really felt something. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt power. I felt different. You know, and um, I think a lot of times it's um, it's the the genetic makeup that that we have as Native people, and that blood that flows through our veins has a memory. You know, and when they hear those drums, you know, when they when they they hear the ayoyotes and the the rhythm that it sets and and the songs that are sung, I think it wakes something up in people. It does. I'm you sure know? it does because yeah. they all, it's like. They come back and they want to bring someone else to experience it with yes. them because it's uh -huh. such a enlightenment <coughs> and I guess a rebirth. We only have about three minutes. I'm sorry. If you could tell us what to expect the next day and the rest of that day and the hours and okay, well we'll have um, you know part of it. We're going to have our maestro Salokoat will be coming back from uh, 
Mexico City, and we'll have um, uh, some other elders. Hopefully, we're trying to bring a few more um, up. Uh, Brother Acopatzin from um, uh, from Acapulco is with uh, Acalpuli down there, and others. Uh, we're looking into the possibility of bringing back tribu. This year, who was with us last year, they they play a lot of um, pre-Columbian indigenous music. They're very very talented and very good, and they added a lot to the to the ceremony and the, and the spiritual energy. And um, you have other native tribes that are there that... Yes. Uh, um, after the sunrise ceremony and before the Mexica dancers, we have, um, we invite relatives from other nations mm -hmm. to come and, and do ceremony with us. Um, so we have um, the uh, Ramzan Ohlone will be coming, uh, Brother Tony Cerda and his group of dancers will be coming. Uh, we have the Zuni Nation will be coming from Nuevo Mexico, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and the Pombos will also be joining us again. And then uh, on Sunday, we'll, have, uh, we'll begin at 10 o'clock, and um, we'll have different nations that are invi invited to, to drum. There'll be some, uh, some dancing, uh, some songs. Uh, we'll have some more Mexica Aztec dancing, um, you know, like that. So that's more like the celebration piece of it is on, is on Sunday. And uh, we're very happy to be able to share our culture and share uh, the beauty of our native ways with the beauty of other native peoples you know who come and in that way we share uh, we share our lives with each other like that we get to know each other you know and um, and appreciate you know the the beauty and the wisdom of each other's culture in that way so we invite everybody you know to come out uh, bring your your whole family uh, it's a uh, drug free alcohol free coca-cola free <laughs> <laughs> event, uh, you know, we recycle um, and all of that, you know, and and uh, it's at Emma Prush Park, which was uh, used to be a farm, and uh, and what a lot of people don't know is that there's a there's an Ohlone shell mound in uh, Emma Prush Park as well, so that 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 shows that Native people have been on that particular piece of land. And for they continue to be on that land. That's right. Through us. And we'll Thank be you there. for being here, and I look forward to it. Okay, we'll, we'll look forward there. to seeing you there. Thank you. Our next guest is going to bring us up to date on the plight of Leonard Peltier. I'd like to welcome Samson Wolf, a mm. good friend of mine. How are you doing, Samson? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Now, you're Rose. still working on uh, Leonard's case and helping out through the community? Yeah, it's, a, it's on? an ongoing, never-ending um, project. You know, Leonard needs help from everybody. Um, you know, he's been in prison going on 39 years for incarceration for a crime we don't believe that he committed, that he's innocent. He's basically railroaded into prison for, uh, you know, aiding and abetting the death of a couple of FBI's that happened back in the mid-70s. Um, you know, essentially what had happened, they found some, uh, some uh, uranium on, uh, on the reservation land and they wanted to get access to that and they, you know, they could make uh, weapons with that of uh, mass destruction and uh, so then in order to steal that from the Indians, they had to figure out a way how to do that and, you know, the divide and conquer uh, the COINTELPRO program and, you know, uh, uh, people were dying and a lot of traditional elders were dying that weren't willing to sell, uh, sign over their land and they asked the uh, uh, people of the American Indian Movement if they would come out and help them. Uh, to, to protect some of their people from getting murdered. And Leonard was one of those people that answered the call and went out there to go help out. And um, fortunately, he's become a scapegoat for the murder of these uh, two FBI. Uh, other people have admitted to uh, committing these crimes and now have uh, passed away. But that's not happening, helping Leonard at all since he's gone on his 39th year. How, does, how is his health? Uh, Leonard's old, he's got diabetes. He still has, uh, he has got problems with his He's had problems with his feet, with his jaws. You know, as you get old, your body starts to break down, and, and he's uh, not, uh, you know, he's susceptible just like any other person that's aging, and especially in the prison system where he doesn't get the best medical help, especially for his diabetes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He really um, should be sent home, and there's been some, um, recently he's lost his sister. Um, you know, uh, I have uh, have family in Oklahoma that has uh, been incarcerated, and when the family die, member dies, they'll let them come out of prison to attend the ceremony. Well, when Leonard's mom passed away, uh, they wouldn't let him out to go uh, pay respects to his mom. And his sister's uh, now recently passed away, and he has no way to come out to pay respects for her. They won't let him out. Um, it's really um, 
you know, heart wrenching for him and his family. You know, to have that loss and not be able to be a part of that. You know, giving that last handshake and saying goodbye to his family member. You know, uh, so right now we're uh, we're asking people to. You know, there's a couple more years of Obama's presidency. It seems like uh, there's been so many uh, attorneys and papers filed and motions on Leonard's behalf to get him released out of prison. Um, that and nothing has, has helped. So it's it's almost like and, and his paroles keeps getting denied. So um, we're asking people to contact uh, uh, the the White House, President Obama, who can still grant him executive clemency when he's when he's out. So this mm -hmm. next couple years here uh, is really a big push to do that. Try and get a big uh, a group of people, everybody to you know to 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 do this to call the White House, write a letter, you know, urge them to um, release uh, Leonard Peltier uh, from, you know, when he gets out. Um, Leonard did a, a really beautiful painting of uh, Floyd Red Crow Westerman, who had passed away uh, last year, and, um, uh, and Floyd was, uh, he, he made this, uh, this video, which is really about the history of American Indians, and if you could r uh, learn about this, the California story. Um, it's and you can buy these online for um, they're like thirty bucks from Floyd's website. So it's really a, a, if you learn about that, uh, if you watch this movie, you'll understand the hatred towards Native Americans and 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 uh, it's just the un unjust cruelty, uh, evilness that is just beyond your comprehension of w how tragedy and tragic. Uh, just the killing of the tribes and, and the slaughter, and it was just, even the first governor of uh, California just wanted all the Indians murdered, you know, wanted them Extinction. dead. Extinction, and they have been. Yeah, so this this has been an ongoing problem, and the, the hatred continued uh, up until, to this day, there's still struggles going on. We're still protesting. Absolutely. You know, I've seen you at the protest for the, <laughs> for the uh, change the name Before for the Before we talk Redskins. a little bit about the mascotting in our last protest, yeah. <laughs> let's <laughs> encourage everyone to write a letter to the president yeah. to... to uh, Grant Leonard executive Grant, clemency. Yes, please, because it's been a long, hard struggle, and at least... He can die outside of prison, please. Yeah. I mean, geez, you know, he, the, he's getting old. He's in poor health, yeah. and he's suffered so long, and he's done it for the people. Yeah, and that's the bottom line. I mean, there's I, one of the uh, Eric Cantor, I believe his name. Uh, he's uh, trying to get. There's a program for older prisoners who aren't a threat to society right, anymore, right. that they can be sent home because there's so many people in our prisons now. It's a huge. It's a, yes. it's a huge business. It's no longer. It's a, a, you know, it's a private industry. It's a money making industry now. It's a business, and and business is good. And they're, they're trying to get. So they're trying to get some of the older prisoners out that can be released, like to you know, home arrest to make room mm -hmm. for new people. And Leonard could be one of those people that could be sent home because he's no longer. He's not a threat. I don't think he's ever been Never a threat been a really threat, to no. anybody, other than just people's own fear generated fear mongers that the government has put into people's and heads. And if people wanted to learn more about Leonard, I know you and Donna, our volunteer camera person, uh, usually have information booths out at powwows in the yeah. community to educate people about Leonard, to mm -hmm. try and get donations to help support the defense. But there's, is there a website they can go to there's, as well? There's, um, you know, it's uh, who, uh, leonardpeltier.info, just leonardpeltier.info, go to there. There's all the information you would need. And locally in San Jose on February 6th at the Mexican Heritage Plaza Center, from six to eight, there's gonna be a uh, commemoration for Leonard Peltier on his 39 years of illegal incarceration. There's gonna be some uh, information there that you'll be able to learn about. And also there'll be some, some music, a little entertainment. And you'll be able to learn more oh, about February Leonard here 6th, locally. February 6th, come out to the Mexican Heritage Plaza, which is on uh, Allen Rock and uh, King, the corner of Allen Rock and King. Yeah, is that right? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I've been out there a few <laughs> okay, times. Yeah. And the other thing we want to talk about, and I have another little poster here, is Native Voice TV is not your mascot. We are not mascots. That's Let's right. talk about that. Yeah. Um, I, I, if they would change it to uh, red skin potato, uh, you know, I think then they could still be the Washington Redskins and just use the potato as the mascot, you know, Absolutely. The, would be fine. But uh, like I said, with with all of the, 
you know, tragedy and the murder and the slaughter and the genocide that they've been bringing on to Native Americans, the, the survivors that have survived out of the kindness of a lot of uh, Caucasian people in this country that were Christians that really believed that, you know, uh, thou shall not kill, right? Um, that if it wasn't for them people, there everybody would be dead. There'd be no more Native Americans. So we're kind of pleading to those people. Once again, if you can understand our pain and suffering, and you helped let us survive here, then maybe you could once again understand that how that is like the N word to the black people is these these caricatures, uh, images of Native Americans, or we just hate it just as much as the as the N word, you know. Um, and as and, and like the old Piccaninny pictures of the blacks, you know, with the mm -hmm. with the big bug eyed eyes and the black and the big lips and stuff that they used to use right. these these same images uh, were were banned because it was insulting to, it the, was to the blacks. It was racist. Straight up racist. And I feel the same way about the mascots. It's it the is. same thing. It is. It and is. it's just in your <laughs> face racism. Let you know you aren't as uh, you're you're less than. You're not equal to. And it's just, it's painful for to see, you know, racist, uh, racism is very ugly. And, and this is continued, continued racism, and it doesn't say much for the owner of the Washington uh, team, team there. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very disrespectful, and uh, he could easily change it to a potato. It seems like it, when it comes to Native Americans, everything's acceptable. It's acceptable, the slavery, to be racist, to do anything you want, you know, that's derogatory. And mm -hmm. this, the way this, you know, affects the minds of our kids, you know, Native American kids who see this kind of thing. On well, a daily there's, basis. there's hasn't been enough truth in the history. You know, the, the history is, is uh, supplied by the oppressors, right? The, the, the victors uh, get to write the history books. But the true history, once it's known, and p the true history of America, I think once people understand what really happened, the murders, the death, the soldiers chopping off breasts of, of Navajo women and tying them up and using them to play ball with, and just the bashing of bait children's heads on the, on the trees to kill them. I mean, there's been such tr horrible crimes committed against Native Americans in this country. Um, and once people understand this, then we can really grow from that and, and learn how to, you know, uh, forgive yourselves, you know. I mean, I don't think American people realize that once they understand the true history of this country, they can forgive themselves and then we can start a healing process together mm -hmm. and move forward in, in uh, unity uh, and have a better relationship between the, uh, the, all the you know, uh, Native American uh, nations in this country and the United States government. Yeah, I would encourage people to write the president a letter, to write the pope a letter. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just disappointed to hear about the, um, the uh, June of Sarah uh, becoming a saint, saint. Um, you know, because this pope has really uh, gave me hope that may maybe the Catholic Church is coming around. And uh, <laughs> I was always afraid. I, might went to the, I went to church when I was growing up, and I was always afraid of the nuns. They were scary. They'd smack you upside the head if you weren't if, <laughs> if you weren't doing what you were told. You know, we're all programmed. We're all born free. You know, freedom in America, in the land of the free, home of the brave. That was what they found here. That's how what the Native Americans were living the lie that is told to them every day mm -hmm. when there's taught to. I'm proud to be an American. Everybody standing up with their hand on their, you know, worshiping this flag, this uh, false idol, the Christian nation who's the violating God's commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's land. And instead we got the Bible and then they took the land. And, and then once we learned the Bible, we said, wait a minute, these, these people are the bad people that this book talks about. This is the America. What, what, what don't they understand? Why are they continuing to let these things happen to not only the indigenous people, but all the rest of the indigenous peoples around the world? With through our government and our military power. That's right. Um, That's right. Uh, so much going on. Uh, let me ask you before we leave. Mm -hmm. I understand your band has been thriving and going across the country. And oh. uh, tell me about your band. <laughs> you uh, have a native band. Yeah, we're called Thunderwolf, and we're Thunderwolf. Yeah, we're having. Right. Uh, we're working on a recording a CD that's going to come out. And I have. Um, 
cartoonist that's doing an insert uh, from the Santa Barbara American Indian Movement. Um, he's a really talented kid, and uh, he's going to do the insert for us. But we're, it's all about songs about dealing with Native American issues. Good. That we're, we are still here, uh -huh. the mascot issues. You know, we are the children of the morning sun. Um, it, it's a lot of songs that have to do. But it's, it's, it's a, a, a hard rock, 70s style, searing guitar solos and drum and bass beats. It's really heavy music, and uh -huh. uh, I'm, I want to do a, a free concert for some of the local kids here and, and show them that, hey, you can pick up an instrument and learn how to play and express your feelings without having to pick up a gun or, or a right. pie, crack pipe and deal drugs or become a gangster. So your music is entertaining and educational then? We try to do that, yes. All right, I look forward <laughs> to the whole band coming on the show. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. <laughs> all right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the work you do, Samson. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being in the community. Thank you for joining us. You can find us on Facebook, and you can go to nativevoicetv.org, and we'll see you next week. Good night.